Hi everyone, my name is Adam and I will be your speaker today. Today, we will be talking about special triangles. But first, we need to review what we know about geometry. These terms are all must-knows if we want to do proofs. Congruent means same. Hypotenuse means the longest side in a right triangle. A side is simply the side of a triangle. A vertex is where two sides intersect. Angles are a measure of how much two lines open up. A bisector is a line that goes through the middle of a segment or a shape, whereas the midpoint is simply the middle of a line. So what defines a triangle? Well, everything has to do with the number three. It needs three sides, three vertices, and three angles. And the three angles must add up to 180 degrees. The last thing is that no one side can be of greater length than the other two combined. This is because this way, the triangle won't be able to close up and actually form a triangle because one side is way too large. Next, we will introduce some types of triangles. If we look at the sides, we get three kinds of triangles, equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. An equilateral triangle means all three sides are equal, hence equilateral. An isosceles triangle must have two congruent sides, where the scalene has no congruent sides. If we look at triangles from the angle perspective, there are also three kinds of triangles. First is a right triangle. A right triangle just means any triangle that has a 90 degree angle in it. An acute triangle means all three angles must be less than 90 degrees. Whereas an obtuse triangle means one angle is more than 90 degrees. We can actually combine these to form things like an acute scalene triangle. A triangle can hold both of these properties. So since we need to do proofs in the future, we need to know a lot of theorems. Here are a few that I think are most important. First is the third angles theorem. It states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent. This is because all of them add up to 180 degrees, which means that when you subtract two angles from 180, you get the last angle. The second one is that vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles essentially make up an X. The vertical angles are inside the X these two angles must be congruent. And the last one is, if a line bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, then the line is also the perpendicular bisector of the base. This is because an isosceles triangle, as we've seen just now, is symmetrical. Meaning if we cut through the bottom, the side on the bottom will also be cut in half. Other theorems that we need to know to determine whether triangles are congruent include SSS, SAS, AAS, and ASA. These are simply ways to determine whether triangles are congruent by looking at sides and angles, side side side, side angle side, angle angle side, and angle side angle. If these are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. And another important theorem we need to know is the HL or the hypotenuse leg theorem. It states that if a hypotenuse and one leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and one leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This is because since a right triangle has to have a right angle, if you match two sides together, the third side is already formed because we already have one angle. And here we have displayed more common theorems that we might need to know. So please feel free to pause the video and take note of these. Okay, now that we've reviewed some of the theorems, let's do a practice proof. You are given that triangle NLP is isosceles with base NP. Line MN bisects line NL, line QP bisects line PL, and line ML is congruent to line QL. Prove that triangle M and L is congruent to triangle QPL. Feel free to pause the video and work it out yourself. So, remember from the last video on proofs, we need to do two columns, a statement and a reason. So first, we can notice that LN and LP are congruent, because remember that it's given that NLP is an isosceles triangle, and isosceles triangles must have two congruent sides. In the second step, the angles M and L and LPQ are congruent. This is because it is given that these two angles are right angles, meaning they are both 90 degrees. And lastly, we know that ML and QL, which are the hypotenuses of the two right triangles on the side, are congruent. And now, we know that triangles M and L and QPL are congruent. This is because of the HL theorem. Remember that it states that if one leg and one hypotenuse of a right triangle is congruent to another, then they are congruent. We've proven that LN and LP are congruent, and LM and LQ are congruent, which satisfies both the requirement for a hypotenuse and a leg. Now let's do another harder practice proof. Again, feel free to pause the video and work it out yourself. You are given 
the angle ACD is congruent to angle BDC. Prove that line CE is congruent to line DE. All right, this is a bit more confusing. But again, we need to find statements and our reasons and be able to find out congruency. First, we know that sides AC and BD are congruent and AD and BC are congruent. This is because it is given that triangles ACD and BDC are congruent, meaning their sides must have the same length. Once again, that means that angle ACD and BDC, CAD and BDC are also congruent because tr congruent triangles have congruent angles. The next step is to figure out more angles. We know that angles AEC and BED are congruent because remember the definition of vertical angles are that they are congruent. The cross, right? And triangles ACE and BDE are congruent. This is by AAS. Remember that we've already figured out that angles CAD and DBC are congruent, which means that now we have two angles and one side. This satisfies the requirement to use the angle-angle side theorem to figure out that these two triangles are congruent. Now, we can easily say that CE is congruent to DE, because since ACE is congruent to EBD, all of their sides must also be congruent. Now, let's get into serious business, right triangles. Right triangles are special, because they are 90 degree angles. And right triangles are also important for trigonometry, which we will learn in the future. There are also lots and lots of theorems, postulates, shortcuts, and rules for right triangles. But first, we need to understand the Pythagorean theorem. It states that if a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the length of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. As you can see on the triangle, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But since the topic is about special triangles, so now let's look at one special triangle that is very important. 45, 45, 90. As in, one right angle and two 45 degree angles. How do we figure out x and y? Remember that the Pythagorean theorem states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this case, a squared and b squared are both x. So, it becomes x squared plus x squared is equal to y squared. If we combine 2x squared, it becomes 2x squared is equal to y squared. And if we work out the algebra, we get y is equal to x root 2. This is an easy shortcut to find out the lengths of the sides of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, because we know that both legs are the same length. Now, let's introduce another special triangle. A 30, 60, 90 triangle is basically one where one angle is 30, one angle is 60, and one is 90. This time, the two legs are not the same length. So how do we figure out? Well, it turns out that if we reflect this triangle to the other side, we actually get an equilateral triangle. So the bottom becomes 2x, and the hypotenuse is still z. That means that z is equal to 2x, because a 60-60-60 triangle is equilateral, and all of its sides are equal. That means z is equal to 2x. Now that we know this, we can substitute 2x for z. We get x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x squared, which is also equal to 4x squared. And if we work out the algebra, we get y is equal to x root 3. This makes things a lot easier, because this means that all you need is x to find out y and z. If you do it the other way around, it also works. If you have z, you know that's 2x, so all you gotta do is divide it by 2. This makes calculating these special triangles extremely easy, because you only need one value to find out the other two. And so it turns out, this is the theorem that we know. Feel free to pause the video and examine these theorems. And to conclude today's video, let's do some practice. Again, try to do these without using the Pythagorean theorem, since we already know what the shortcuts are. Feel free to pause the video and figure it out yourself. Here are the solutions to the problem. Remember that these are really easy because all you have to do is plug the numbers in and you will get the answer. And with that, let's talk about some applications of what I just talked about today. Well, one benefit of knowing special triangles is that we can do fast calculations without needing to use the Pythagorean theorem, which sometimes takes a lot of time. Because sometimes, if you have, for example, a 4 and a 7, you need to root a very weird number. And second is that you can solve problems with angles rather than sides. Remember that in 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90 triangles, you only need one side to know all three sides. Whereas in another or in an ordinary triangle, you would need to use two sides. And lastly, 
Right triangles are extremely important in trigonometry. So stay tuned for that video because it might come out sooner than you real. No, that's just cringe. The last benefit to knowing these special triangles is its application in trigonometry. So stay tuned for that video. And with that, this concludes today's lecture. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you in future videos.